Hello and welcome to the training series on Cisco DNA Center. My name is Ram Kumar Chalapa. I am a technical marketing engineer working with Cisco DNA Center. In this video, we will take a look at how to add devices to Cisco DNA Center inventory using various device discovery methods. Adding devices to Cisco DNA Center inventory is the first and foremost step which will help you to manage and perform change management across thousands of network devices in your network. Cisco DNA Center not only helps you to perform change management, but also provides insights on how your network is performing, how your clients are performing, or how your application is performing in your network based on various health scores once the devices are added to Cisco DNA Center inventory. Now, these are the ways in which you could add devices to Cisco DNA Center inventory. The focus of this video is to help understand how the discovery tool or the discovery workflow helps onboard network devices onto DNA Center inventory. Uh, now, before we jump onto the actual demo, let's take a look at some of the prerequisites which are needed for uh, the discovery tool to work properly. So please make sure your CLI credentials, the SNMP credentials and the NetConf credentials are properly configured on your network device before we start the discovery workflow. The CLI credentials with right privileges, uh, the SNMP credentials or the SNMP ACLs and the NetConf uh, port 830 uh, and any authorization privileges for NetConf should be properly configured on your network devices before we start the discovery workflow. Let us now quickly jump into the demo to understand how the discovery tool or discovery workflow helps onboard network devices onto DNA Center inventory easily. You can access the discovery tool from the Cisco DNA Center dashboard by navigating to the tool section and discovery. Now this discovery takes you to a dashboard where you can see a lot of details on the inventory overview, the latest discovery job detail, the type of discovery used and the discovery status. To start off with a new discovery, click on add discovery. The discovery tool uses the discovery type to choose how to scan your network and add devices to the DNA center inventory. The discovery type can be of following options. It can be either CDP or it can be an IP address range or it can be LLDP. So let's look at how DNA Center discovers based on CDP. To start the CDP scan, enter the seed IP or the single IP address uh, of the device in the IP address field. Cisco DNA Center will use this IP to begin the discovery scan. You can use the subnet filter option to exclude subnets from your scan. And we can add multiple uh, subnets or IP address from being excluded from the scan. Finally, in the CDP level, enter the number of hops from the seed device that you would want to scan. You can choose a number between 1 to 16 and by default, the CDP level is set to 16. Now, we can choose the preferred management IP. We can either set it to none and we can let DNA Center choose the IP address of the device to scan or preferably we could use the loopback address uh, so that DNA Center would look for loopback address of the device to scan and discover the devices. Now, if you would like to uh, discover your devices based on LLDP, it's just the protocol which is changing. Other than that, the details of the IP address, the subnet filters or the LLDP level remains the same. Now, you could also discover your devices based on the IP address range. You can use the IP address range when you know all the IP address that needs to be discovered. Or you could also use this workflow if you'd like to restrict the number of devices from being discovered. Now you enter the starting and the ending IP address range in the from and to fields, which the DNA center can use to start the discovery scan. We can add additional IP address ranges for the discovery job, each and every discovery job. In this video, we will have only one IP address range, which we will discover. Inside the subnet filter, you could add uh, the IP address or subnets which needs to be excluded from the discovery scan. And finally, on the preferred management IP address, we can either choose none and we are letting know that DNA Center would use the device IP address or 
you could use the loopback address that data center was scanned based on the loopback IP address of the device. Now, under the credentials area, you can choose either the global credentials which are already created for use for the discovery job, or we could create uh, new credentials for the discovery job and save them for future purposes. DNA Center uses these credentials to discover the devices and move them to the managed state. To add new credentials, click on Add Credentials and provide the CLI credentials the CLI username, password, and enable password, uh, SNMP credentials, the SNMP read credentials, or write credentials. If your network is using SNMP v3, then you could provide the SNMP v3 credentials, the username, the mode, either it's authentication and privacy, or no privacy, or no authentication and no privacy, and the SHA type. DNA Center supports a privacy type as AES-128, uh, Cisco AES-192 or Cisco AES-256. And finally, the privacy password. Now, for any devices, catalyst switches, which are running 17.3 and above, uh, DNA Center can discover the devices using the NetConf port. And so providing a NetConf port for catalyst switches is optional. Whereas if your network is also running um, or if the uh, IP address range has wireless LAN controllers, uh, Catalyst 9800s, then the NetConf port is mandatory for the uh, for DNA Center to discover the wireless LAN controllers and add them to the inventory. Now, we could either save these credentials for this particular discovery job or we could select this option save as global which would save them to the device credential screen of Cisco DNA Center, which can further be used for further discovery jobs or, um, uh, or manageability purposes. Now we can choose to have multiple credentials for a particular discovery job and Cisco DNA Center will iterate through each of these credentials until it is able to successfully discover the devices with one of the credential. If you choose to use only one credential uh, for CLI or SNMP, you could choose to turn off uh, the other credential so that DNA Center uses only one credential for discovering the devices. Now, uh, from the advanced settings, you could see that the protocol order is either set to, can be either set to SSH or Telnet. By default, Cisco recommends to use SSH as the protocol order for Cisco DNA Center to discover the devices. Once we are done setting up the uh, task or the workflow, we can now go ahead and click on the discovery button to start the discovery job. Clicking on the discovery link will take us to a screen where we can choose to discover the devices now or later. If we choose to discover the devices later, we can provide the start date uh, and time and similarly when the job has to end. Uh, in this demo, we will choose the option now. Also, you will see a toggle menu where you can either choose to discover new devices within the provided IP subnet range or the CDP range or choose to rediscover all the devices. I'll turn off this toggle now and I'll click on the start button to start the discovery process. Once the discovery has started, you can see the status on the right hand side where you can see the status as completely green. And then you can see other fields such as uh, ICMP, SNMP, CLI, and NetConf. So what it means is during the discovery process, DNA Center first initially checks the ICMP status for the device. So DNA Center will try to do a basic ping operation to see if the device IP address is reachable. If it is reachable, then DNA Center will try to log into the device using the provided CLI credentials. And if it is able to do uh, log into the device using the CLI credentials, then it marks the device as green. And finally, it tries to also perform an SNMP walk on the device. It tries to uh, uh, perform an SNMP polling to get the necessary relevant details of the device, such as the device hardware module, the inventory details for DNA Center to understand if the device is actually support a device and if it can move the device to manageability state. And finally, if the device supports NetConf, DNA Center does all of this using the NetConf as well. So these are a few of the steps uh, which DNA Center does in, uh, in an intent-based manner before it actually discovers the devices and adds them to the DNA Center inventory. 
and you can see that the discovery workflow is in progress it is trying to reach out to all the devices within the ip address range we provided and you can see the job description right on your left we can now see that the discovery job is completed and on the right you can see uh, there are six devices which were identified in the ip address range which we provided and out of which dna center was able to successfully identify two of the devices and rest four of the devices failed due to a reason either the cli credentials did not match or the snmp credentials did not match or both and finally netconf also failing now once after these devices are successfully discovered you can now click on this link to go to inventory and view the devices so clicking on the link will take you to a screen uh, where you can look at all the devices which are currently unassigned so we discovered um, uh, two devices and an apu which was uh, associated to the controller and so all of these are now added to the inventory and are currently in unassigned state so the second part of the workflow uh, which is not covered inside this video is to assign the device to a site and push telemetry settings now if you are a dna center customer who is running dna center version 2.3.3.x which is the latest uh, ga release then you could access the discovery workflow inside the workflow section of dna center to access that navigate to workflows and in here you could see a new workflow called as discover devices and you can use this uh, discovery workflow also to discover the devices and add them to Cisco DNA Center inventory. Now, this workflow is pretty much uh, similar to the discovery tool what we just saw. So you have to choose the discovery type, provide the range of IP address, choose the preferred management IP, uh, choose the relevant credentials or create task specific or global credentials for CLI, SNMP, uh, SNMP v3, netconf and a uh, few advanced settings but what is new inside or what has been enhanced inside this workflow is that uh, apart from discovering the devices this workflow also helps you to assign a device to an existing site or create a new site inside this workflow. So uh, you can either choose a site uh, inside this workflow where the devices can be assigned to automatically once the devices are discovered successfully or you can create a new site uh, where it takes you to the site hierarchy to create a new site to uh, put it under which parent what is the site name and so on and so forth or skip the site assignment for now where the discovery job only discovers the devices and adds them to the inventory so this is the additional option what you get out of this workflow apart from what we saw on the discovery tool and finally you also get to schedule which is similar to the discovery tool we can choose the option now finally the summary page of what is the uh, summary of device ip range or cdp neighbor what we wanted to discover the credential details um, protocol section and other details and we could start the discovery job uh, which would eventually go through the same procedure and discover the devices and add them to cisco dna center inventory with this, we are at the end of workflow for the Discover devices, which is available in the latest release, which is 2.3.3.x. We are now at the end of this video demo. For more videos, please do visit our Cisco DNA Center YouTube channel and also our user guide on how to discover and manage devices via Cisco DNA Center inventory. Thanks for watching.